hate puppies. <laughs> Good podcast. <laughs> I feel threatened. <laughs> that, one, that one works on a few different levels, Troy. Yeah. I appreciate that. That killed me. But they're not good for podcasts. No, they're memes. it's not. Yeah, it's more visual. Yeah, it, it, it is an audio medium. What? Audio. We used to video. Remember that guy, Ely? Ely was the coolest. Yeah, he was I liked great. Ely. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House, the only podcast dedicated to solving first world problems and hopefully helping you figure out what beer you should be drinking this weekend. I don't really have a great beer this week. All right. Our guests are going to love it. Yeah. Well, What's that's that you say? The, that's we have the, guests? We do have guests. As in more than one? Yeah, plural. Holy shit. Not just guest. Yeah. And but get, you see, that's how things go here. Not the Abacus and not Ely. No. No. Because they're regulars and regulars never show up. <laughs> <laughs> that's just how it works. That's Look how up it the is. definition. Yeah. What's a regular? Someone who says they'll show up and never shows up. How do you become a regular? Funny you should ask. You say you listen all the time and you would love to be on every week. You show up consecutive weeks in a row and then you ghost us for all of time that's it okay cool then you're a regular (laughs) you're officially a third well congrats welcome back guys you're not regulars (laughs) you don't want to be a regular (laughs) we don't want you to be a regular (laughs) the worst thing you can be now this week we've got adam and terrence with us how you guys doing tonight doing great I'm so happy to be back on the uh, number one sports podcast in the (laughs) rva there you go see Terrence brings out the old yeah. school jokes. I like that. He's a long time listener, first time caller. And I think the last time I was here was Ely was here. The last time I was on the podcast. Oh, so the one last few one times was that he's yeah. been here. Yeah, recently. That was probably a funnier episode than tonight's. That be was then. a year ago. <laughs> was it a year ago? It now? probably was. Wow, that's kind of how that works. Yeah, Ely brings the funny, then he disappears into the night. Last because last time he was on was in July when I was not here, when I was on my three week trip. Yes. He sat in for a week. Ely's the equivalent of the comedic fart. <laughs> Meaning? He drifts in, <laughs> drops a bunch of comedy on you, and then just drifts yep. away, almost like he was never there. Literally gone with the wind. Well, but, the episode I was on was when we did the uh, Coke and Pepsi with milk. Oh, yeah. Oh. I didn't even get to do a deli that night. Oh, you oh. got gypped out of the whole, j- the whole deli and everything. I got Malort, though. I did get Malort that night. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yeah, so you won? And you came back? <laughs> I'm back for more. More Malort. Yeah. We have. He it. said it. <laughs> yeah, he did. Tonight, we could let, if you do want some Malort, you can try the finest Malort, the hardest one to get your hands on, Hoppy Malort. Mm, IPA Malort. Mm, it's so good. Yeah. You thought it stayed with you for a long time before. <laughs> Just add some hops. You thought the first one was... Uh, Vomit in your mouth, disgusting. Well, because hops have a way of coating the roof of your mouth. Yeah, and the Lord's famous for staying on the tongue. Yeah, in the back of the throat. So now, best we can, of both worlds. Yeah, yeah, we can really bring it home. The engineers really outdid themselves. I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Didn't I send you a picture of the like pumpkin spice Malort? So that pumpkin spice Malort was released and only put into like a one particular bar in Chicago. And then so people were coming from all over to go to that bar so they could get their hands on pumpkin spice Malort. So it was it was well played for the bar and for Malort. That's got to be better than regular Malort. Like Malort. I genuinely would love some pumpkin spice Malort. Like, I think that sounds phenomenal. I mean, the nutmeg has to make it better, right? It's got it. It's Terrence. pumpkin spice season. Like, yeah, you just love everything pumpkin spice. Yeah, right? I do. I'm a basic bitch. <laughs> you are that. I love it. Pumpkin spice malort. Shit in your pants and have a good taste on your breath. Yeah. It's perfection. Once a year, all the little, all the girls line up and wait so they can get their pumpkin spice malort. You don't mm. drink anything pumpkin spice, I assume. Every year when the when the the women in my house go out and get their first pumpkin spice. I was going to say spice, they, they do. Yeah, but I always I get one with them and I uh, enjoy it. And then I don't drink it again because it's full of bullshit. Yeah. I don't even think pumpkins taste like that. No, they do not. <laughs> I just had a pumpkin. Just took a bite out of one. <laughs> None of it. Just because? I just wanted that pumpkin spice flavor. Turns out, nope, not what it tastes like. Well, pumpkin pie doesn't taste like a pumpkin, right? Not really. No, not at all. 
No, that's the, isn't that funny? Because apple pie tastes a lot like apples. Well, it has apples in it. Pumpkin pie doesn't have real pumpkin in it, does it's it? It's got pumpkin puree. Yep. Does it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They grind that shit up, and then you fill it with all I those I was going to say, but then they, fl- they put other shit in it, right? It's but everything else other- that makes it taste that way. Yeah. I guess pecan pie doesn't taste a whole lot like pecans. They've just turned that into some caramel treat. Right. So, how, about, how about the pumpkin beers? You a fan of those? I drank six last night. Big fan. But that's the. Uh, but the, that's not pumpkin flavored. That's nutmeg. But that's the atomic pumpkin. No, I drink the atomic pumpkin, the Voodoo Ranger. What is that like pumpkin. clove in it? Right. It's got. It's got. It's like, definitely spices. They, yeah. put, they put spice, like legit spice. And this year's batch may be the best one yet. I say that every year, but I went and bought a twelve pack, and I drank six of them last night, sitting by the fire. Last night was Halloween. Do you guys have good Halloween? Yeah. Do you have a good good crew come around? You I mean, were out with I, the I went out with. My 14-year-old didn't want to... He went out and didn't trick-or-treat, really. He was in a costume. I think he went to one or two houses. And then the the almost 12-year-old, he hit a bunch of houses. But we had a rolling amoeba of kids coming and going. I was just there mostly because, like, one, my kids are, like, just at that age where, like, they're good kids, but, like, given the right group, they will fuck around. Of course. So, like... I was like, I'll walk with you just to prevent the fucking around. <laughs> yep. Then there's also like, I am more scared of my neighborhood on Halloween night than any other night because Terrence knows you've lived in my neighborhood. Terrence lives in the neighborhood. Like all the neighbor neighboring neighborhoods come over and it's literally like minivans and panel vans and like people you've never seen before. There's more yeah. cars on the road on Halloween night. None of those lazy bastards park and walk up and down the street like they could. And it's like, I'm worried about them getting clipped. I'm worried about them getting, like, snatched up. Like, so many people are out. Like, it's bananas. Yeah. Your neighborhood goes off, though. So it's a it's a beacon. Like, everyone yeah. comes oh, in from yeah. the city. Like, there. we had a weird, like, couple. Like, I couldn't tell what sex they were. They were, it, sound, it looked like, it literally looked like a mom and a special needs son who was, like, full grown and they were both in like head to toe costumes. <laughs> so many ways to go with. <laughs> and because she was like holding holding him and like dragging him along, and he was kind of like barely walking and nonverbal. And like she's like, maybe he was just in character, like a method actor, and he was Frankenstein. Maybe, but anyway, this was early in the night. She stopped our kids as we were walking by and like had a bag of candy. He was like, "Here, you want some of our candy?" And Oh, the, they don't even... So she's a little special, too. She thinks trick-or-treating, you go door-to-door and hand out yeah. candy. Yeah. So oh, both, that's so adorable. So like my group was like... They were hitting house after house. So they're like, no, nah, we're good. Like We got fucking pillowcase of candy. Like, no, we don't s- steal candy from my special needs yeah. kid. This is the only way he learns. I was like, this is weird, man. There's just weirdos out. It's like literally the freaks come out on Halloween, you know? Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. We had, uh, we had a Barbie box. Yeah. It's not as cool as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a few weeks ago, my wife got her hands on, someone had made a life-size box, like a Barbie would come in, so yeah. like kids could stand in and take pictures. Well, my wife put it out that we were going to have a lit up Barbie box at our house yeah. for any of the Barbies. And sure enough, like the Barbies came by, like yeah, in the early part of the there's day. Barbies everywhere last night. Yeah. So the early part of the day, the, the the little Barbies came by and all stood in there and the moms took their pictures and we were like, this is great. But then our neighborhood gets a lot of like bust in kids too, yeah. like where they drive in from the city. And I'll be damned if that was not a hit with the old inner city women, the moms. Oh, which, nice. You know, like one of them showed up, got in there and she was she was kind of hot, dude. So I was like, yeah, get in the box. Like, <laughs> let's take some pictures. Like, I like where this is going. And so she's taking pictures. Let's try slutty Barbie. Let's just see see where that yeah, goes. Yeah, let's just do a little slutty Barbie. Yeah. You know, why not? And so she's in there doing it. And then, like, she gets on her phone and starts calling in. And, like, the cars that were all in from all over. Oh, snap. Started coming down, coming down the street and they were all jumping out and running up and like coming in. One of them did have a special needs kid. She was like, Oh no, he's in the car because he get there's too much excitement for him yeah. out here. But she's like, But I gotta get in this box. <laughs> and like ran up and I was like, Hell yeah. She <laughs> like, let me just leave my crack. kid alone in the car for a few minutes. Yeah. But they just kept coming in. Like the phone call went out. The bat the Barbie signal went out yeah. to all the cars that were in the neighborhood. And we got it, we got a lot of them, which were a lot of fun. 
six atomic pumpkins in. Yeah. You know, I was like, this is so much fun. Look at all these people coming. Yeah. I was having a blast. Terrence, you were out, weren't you? I didn't do Halloween. Uh, My buddy uh, turned 50. So I went to... Gross. You hanging out with old people? Yeah. Um, (laughs) I'm so old. We went to the Big Whiskey Grill and uh, did did bourbon tasting for his 50th. Was Ah. it dead in there? Uh, Yeah. That's awesome. You timed it just right. Yeah. No, that but, place is always dead. But we oh, had, is it? We yeah. had the back. We had like the back room. Um, it was it was sweet. It was a good time. Because my kids are saying like, they're yeah they're too old for trick or treating now. They're, they're the youngest. Even your the youngest. Young, he got he got. I saw him in costume and he was taken off when I yeah. left. Yeah. Um, but uh, I like getting out of the neighborhood. It was fun because it does get wild. Yeah. Yeah. No, your neighborhood's insane. Adam, did you do anything? Yeah, so my neighborhood's pretty similar to Troy and them's, but or in Terrence, but uh, not the bust in from the city part. It's just our neighborhood has so many kids in it. I think there's like, okay. we have like four or five buses just for the elementary school for our, just our neighborhood. Oh, we have enough and, kids. We don't need any extra right, kids. Right. But like, but I think other neighborhoods from around us all come yeah, there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Because like, there is kids everywhere. We were walking around. I have a nine year old. The 14 year old was out doing whatever, like with his friends. I didn't even ask. <clears throat> yeah. And then the nine year old was like, hey, I'll walk around. And he's seeing all of his friends from school. And we're just, there's just people everywhere. You couldn't even walk on some streets. It was so packed with people. It was like, it. yeah, it was like super fun. Our neighborhood cool. is super tacky though. So they go Your all out for Halloween. The top. You're the Christmas yes. neighborhood, the tacky. Halloween neighborhood. Yep. You're it's, all that. It's going to be the tacky lights are all going up here in the next few weeks for Absolutely. getting ready for the uh, 5K in our neighborhood. Yeah, your neighborhood goes off. Any yeah. do you guys see any mischief? Any uh any ne'er do wells? I don't think I saw any. Um at Regency Mall? No, I didn't see <laughs> <laughs> I definitely saw like some kids that weren't in costume trick or treating and some kids that and some adults trick or treating. I'm like, what the hell, man? Like I don't know, dude. I, I prefer a butterfinger that I had to hunt down. Like I if I if I go to the store and buy a butterfinger, there is no joy in that. But like if I do see people handing out butterfingers, I'm always like either tell my kids to go up there or I just carry my ass up in a cowboy hat and I'm like trick or treat. Dude, I that's like that's the joy of having kids, especially multiple kids. You just scoop off the dad tax and you're I golden. Do. So and, is that it, yours? Butterfingers is your choice. Like when they come home, that's what you're taking from the That's bag. what I steal. Because it's a treat, man. Like I don't yeah. get butterfingers. And my wife intentionally will not allow butterfingers in our bowl of candy because she knows that I will just eat <laughs> all the butterfingers. <laughs> yeah. So she had like whoppers and shit. Oh. I was like, come on. But I was so hard up last night. I ate, I ate a pack of whoppers. That malty Ugh. shit is not so good. gross. It's trash. Yeah. That milk duds too. When it goes. We when, have milk duds here yeah. too. I haven't even had, but I, I had some Snickers, Kit Kats, butter. When fingers. candy was popular in the 40s and 50s, that, meant, that means it's trash candy, dude. Avoid but that's that That's when shit. it was like Necco wafers and shit. That's oh. where whoppers and shit came from, yeah. dude. This shit's yeah. old as hell. Mm, malted balls. Well, yeah. I got multi balls. Yeah. Old, old lady candy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather have a fucking Butter's work or whatever the hell it is. A butter. Fi- oh, you're uh, talking the, about a Werther's uh, original? Werther's original, yeah. Actually, I find, that, I find that to be a tasty treat. I do like those. Yeah, that's the old, the old candy <laughs> but that a I'll butter be like, like oh, is that a Werther's? Don't butter, mind if I do. Butterfingers are top notch. I do love a Butterfinger. I love a Butterfinger. It's got a good crunch to it. Like, what's going on in there? And that's one of the only ones I fuck with that, like, I, I go... I usually go straight for the chocolate peanut butter. If it's got those in it, that's my jam. Yeah, there's just, and I know most people are Reese's, but I like that that all natural peanut butter that's in a Butterfinger. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Mm. No preservatives at all. None. Yeah, it's shocking that basically they, calorie free. Well, they get that from the Butterfinger tree. <laughs> and it comes like that. The only thing they do is add the wrapper. Hold on. When I picked you up tonight, you were like. Uh, I ate too much candy. Last I did night. eat too much candy. And do you see what I was doing out here right before we started? I was eating a Kit Kat. <laughs> like, this shit is, it's hard to have this run. I walked out here with the rest of the bowl of candy. Yeah. I saw it. I was like, Ooh, don't mind if I do. I, I like candy, but I like, I like earned candy. I don't like sour candies. Like I will never be a sour candy. You can, guy. You can have all that. Nah, but some people swear by it. Buy yeah. that oh, shit yeah. by the yard. Love the young kids love it. Yeah, yeah. Kid, all my kids are. Yeah, they, they know I won't steal those. I'm like, yeah, those are all yours. Yeah, 
Yeah, like for me. sour gummy worms, like fucking you could have you could have a five gallon bucket of that. I will never touch it. Nah, I'd put my hand in a bucket of hypodermic needles before a bucket of sour <laughs> yeah. candy. Yeah. Any any jello shooter houses in your neighborhood? No. I was here, so I was the one handing stuff out if anyone wanted, but no one took me up on it. So then you look like an asshole when you're like, You need a beer, need some bourbon thing. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll not, be here. You're not welcome here anyway. Yeah. Narc. Yeah, our neighborhood, like, they pass out beers and shots and all kinds of shit. Like, we used to see each other, Terrence and I would see each other crisscrossing through the neighborhood and handing out beers back and forth. Yeah. Like, yeah, people with uh, just, just coolers, coolers, yeah. and, coolers and, and or if you had a fireplace, that was the signal. Yep. If you had a fireplace and drive a signal that you, you had beer, you had shot, yep. you, you were like, come on in and get drinks. That yeah, a like, lot of people do that now, that which is like sense. set the solo stove up at the end of the driveway. Yep. Then your dog ain't going bananas. You're not opening and closing the door a hundred yep. times. I finally got to use that solo stove tower heater. Was, oh, the one that doesn't work? Yeah, but it was just the right amount of cold for something that doesn't work. Yeah. So it was like we were just huddled up next to it. Warm fire. Did you set it up at the end of the driveway? Is that how you did it? You, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was dropping shit yeah. over there. It was in the Barbie house. Did you, yeah, yeah. Did you set the uh, solo stove up too? Nah. Just the tower? I didn't want to be dealing with wood and everything. I yeah. like the ease of pellets and the lack of heat. <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> had gloves on and shit. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't see any... It's, like, it's nice and warm if you touch it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and your hand will stay warm for a month. Yeah, I didn't see any crazy mischief last night. I remember back when, when I was a kid, there was always mischief in the neighborhood. Well... Like, you get to a certain age, and that's why you walked with your boys. Yeah, I mean... They, look... I know my kids aren't perfect, like, but just being around is enough of a deterrent. Like you, like you were talking, Absolutely. you were talking earlier about how you didn't see any mischief. I'm like, and how like the kids were like cordial and nice. I'm like, yeah, because you're talking to them, yep. but get them outside of your ear radius and they're, you know, dropping F bombs and looking yeah. for a pumpkin to smash. Did you, you ever have that one kid, the one kid in the yeah. neighborhood who was the ringleader of oh, all yeah. the bad? Yeah. Yeah. I had one of those. His name was Andy. And this kid scared the bejesus I think a lot of, of Andys are like that. Yeah. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> this son of a bitch. Like, he was smoking cigarettes at the bus stop, like, by seventh grade, maybe yeah. sixth. Like, a the chest bus. hair and a full beard. Yeah, he just, he was a man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he just, that's how he was. And every every Halloween, as I was getting older, he would find you. And then all of a sudden, now you were in the bad bad crew because like we were just out getting candy yeah we we're just like we're aging out of it but we still wanted to get candy and then andy'd show up oh you knew shit was it going was easier down. to go along with him than go against him he'd kick your ass yeah like no point in dealing Plus with he had that. all the cigarettes he did have all the cigarettes <laughs> yeah unfortunately later in life he probably taught you to smoke didn't he he did not my first cigarette was given to me by a guy named brian my second was from Andy. <laughs> I was like, hey, Andy, I tried one of them cigarettes and I'm alive. I yeah. still made it. Like, let me get some of them. I'm, I'm fiending, man. We got, had a one. we got a couple kids in our neighborhood live actually in your old house. And they okay. and they are some troublemaking little shits. They're like vaping all the time on the bus and stuff. Like, they're, they're the hellions, huh? Yeah, they are. Yeah. I, I could have told you that as soon as they moved in. Yeah. And I, I knew they were trouble. In fact, when that house was bought... The, there was a guy who came and he looked at the house and my real estate agent was like, no one's ever going to want that g get garage in the backyard. You converted into your man room. And she's yeah. all like air yeah. quoting me. I was like, dudes love fucking man rooms. Like yeah. That's a selling point. We should bump this price up. Yeah. She's like, that's not how it works. And by the way, once you take everything out of it, it's back to a garage. Like it's just a. Except for the stripper door. <laughs> yeah. But a stripper door always would be. It's just a padded door. Well, he walked in. And, and fell in love with it. He walked, he walked out, looked in it, looked around, saw the bar in it, saw all the stuff. He went around the house, sat on the front stoop, and just smoked cigarettes until his wife was done looking at it. <laughs> and he was like, oh, no, we're taking it. Yeah. It down. I was like, hell yeah. See, that sold the house on first visit. So I could tell they were going to be hellions, though, when he took one look at the bar, just lit up a cigarette and walked out front. I was like, yep. Yeah. Those people are going to be interesting. They're going to fit right in on that street. That's some bullshit that your real estate agent had that angle. Like, you no, know, your job as a real estate agent is to go find the motherfucker that's looking for this yeah. thing. That's right. Turned out it wasn't wasn't too hard. But I remember one day, Andy, he was famous for turning on hoses. 
He would like, if you left a hose out, then he would just like stick that on your front porch and like, just turn it on and like, just, <laughs> just let just, it run. Yeah. Just be a pain in the ass. Oh my in general. gosh. But we had the chief of staff, John Sununu back, like this is back first Bush thing. John Sununu was the chief of staff and he lived in our neighborhood. So every morning, like the armor plated limo would pull up and pick this kid up. And we had Peter Sununu was the little, uh, the kid in our, in our school, but Andy always wanted to fuck up the Sununu's house. It was always his goal because they had these, they had these sheep. That's smart. They had these sheep in the front yard. That's the holy and, grail for Andy. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and the sheep had, uh, we always knew there, so there was these sheep, but the black sheep was actually just recording devices. Like it, oh. it, it monitored everything and like wow. went back to like, like secret AI service. Sheep? Yeah. Like this was, this was. Did this, it move around? Its eyes would, so you knew. His eyes yeah. were like, rrr, 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 rrr. it was like some old. So you're school. telling me there were live sheep? No, in no, this no. Guy's... Oh, okay. No, no, no. they're like yard ornaments. Oh, okay. But the black. I thought sheep... you lived like farm adjacent or something. No, the black sheep though became well known because Peter had let it out on the bus that that one is the one that the Secret Service can monitor to watch my house. Oh, Andy got hard when he oh. heard that. So Andy found out <laughs> yeah. that the Secret Service were on the other side of this sheep. And this one year, he just kept smoking cigarettes, going, we're going to the Sunu News. <laughs> oh, we're taking no. out that house. Like, I'm getting that. And this motherfucker took a baseball bat Whoa. to the black sheep, like, wow. went right up at it, looked at it. Woo! <laughs> 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 started beating the shit out of it. Like, and we were, like, standing back on the street, like, oh, shit. Like, this is too much. Yeah, like, this, you is, can't, this just got real. That's yeah. the chief of staff. Yeah. Like. That's like, what, third in line? Yeah. Like, this is a real problem. This is like a crime against the, the, the government. government. Yeah. So we were like... That's taxpayer funds you just yeah. right, We were kid. like, Andy, we're not going to that house, dude. He's like, watch me. I remember that look in his eyes, put that cigarette out, went up there with a bat. I was like, yeah, that's... Did he suicide himself right after that? I don't know whatever <laughs> happened to him. <laughs> he's he's I remember yeah. we... Yeah, he we is bought, 100%. Yeah, 100%. 100%. But we bolted. We were like, nah, this is this is way yeah. too much. But he did it. He did what he said he was gonna do. He fucked up that that secret service tied black sheep. What happened afterwards? Uh, we bolted. Yeah. No, I'm saying the next day you never Like heard. did you yeah, did you ever yeah. hear anything with the repercussions? I think that's the only kid in the neighborhood that even the Secret Service gave a pass to. <laughs> you know, like, there were no repercussions. They're like, that, we've been actions. monitoring at Andy's house, and that kid is pretty fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I think we just leave let him, him alone. Slide. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll Andy's just... dad, when he was around, was the guy drinking the Budweiser in the yard. Like, you knew not to go yeah. fuck with that house. They were. They were different, and I think even the Secret Service came to that conclusion. Like, it probably a lot of it probably came from the kid. Like, we cannot press charges. Like this, yeah. kid, this whole family will eat me alive. They did move out the next year. Well, maybe that's that maybe that had something it. to do with it. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah probably yeah. did. They, 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 come to think of it, yeah, the kid got switched. To, you know what? I guess there were random because <laughs> <laughs> he did stop going to public school soon thereafter, yep. and they moved out. Yeah, huh. we never see Andy anymore. Yeah. yeah. What to him? He, air quote, moved out. Yeah, it's interesting. Isn't it crazy, though, now, like, stuff like that is all going to be videoed now. Like, it's all going to be digitized. I know, but, like, like, like it doesn't stuff, stop anybody. I know. It's wild. Like, what kids are get, doing now in schools and stuff and Snapchat coming out in there, and then they're getting pulled in to, like, have these conversations about social media, and it's, it's like, such a different world than what we grew up in. Yeah, like, we, we were, like, scared of getting caught because then we get in trouble, but, like, now it's like you know evidence. you're gonna get caught. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like first off, you gotta catch me. Secondly, you gotta prove it was me mm-hmm. after you caught me. Now it's like, no, I have four different video recordings of you doing this. We got the rain camera, your two <laughs> jerk off buddies standing back, you know, Snapchat. I got it. the black sheep. Yeah, yeah, we got the black sheep, and it's like, yeah, I'm still gonna do it. You're like, huh? Like, why would you do that? Then the the fact that the dummies video themselves doing all the stuff, like, yeah. or you're friends video you doing all this stuff like no one ever accused kids of being smart no, no. but this stuff comes no, up to bite you years later now like you were smart absolutely. enough yeah you were smart enough like look i'm sure we all did some shit that was you know on one i didn't set foot on that property i'm yeah. standing by it now <laughs> don't january 6 my ass yeah. i didn't do shit <laughs> no my point okay, is i just don't want this to go the wrong way i, I stand by the fact i said no andy yeah. no 
I'm saying it now. And what no. kept you from doing it? Well, I was going to get caught. A there's, recording, there's recording device. device. Exactly. <laughs> but that, that doesn't, doesn't slow stop kids anybody now. down now. No. They're like, hey, pull your phone out and watch this. Like, what? We heard about some stuff that had happened with my older son's friends at school was something like that and we were talking and he's like dad i know not to do that stuff like we've always talked about that um but it's almost like they need to have a class they need to have something part of the curriculum just yeah. around social media and how they handle it and you know what the ramifications are what absolutely you do. like yeah. it should be part of like that. life like those health classes they take something but yeah they don't teach any of that but they, they should also teach like you know how to you know, do basic accounting, but they don't teach that either. I mean, there's a lot of stuff they don't teach. One of our neighbors, uh, cars got stolen not too long ago uh, and found like almost immediately. So it was just a joy ride for the kids, but they synced their phone up to the Bluetooth radio. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. While they were driving. IPhone. Exactly. Yeah. So the cops were like, we're going to find him real soon. Like <laughs> yeah. and, and they immediately caught him. <laughs> so, yeah. Who takes the time to sync your car? <laughs> hey, your if you're going to steal a car, you want your tunes playing exactly. when, you're, when you're doing donuts in the pool parking lot or something. You don't want to listen to the radio. Yeah, you want to listen to the radio. <laughs> I feel like the radio is the answer. You just Kids don't even understand radio. what radio is. No. If you're under 25. Yeah, they don't even know how to turn it on. No. We had this is too complicated. I'll just have to sync up my phone. I can yeah. do this in no time. They don't want to listen to commercials. We had a neighbor get their car, quote unquote, stolen and i don't know if this is the same one we're talking about terrence but like she put it out on social media on next door she's like my car was stolen blah 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 and i like walk out and it's on my block and she lives in the no. back of the neighborhood it might have been is ivan's ivan's car yeah and i was like um was it stolen or did you leave the keys in it and she was like blah 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 that's not your business, blah, 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 blah. I was like, she left oh, so you left your keys in it. And like, yeah. by the way, it wasn't stolen. Some jerk-off kids took it up and rode around the front of the neighborhood and left it. And how about take some ownership? And yes, kids are pieces of shit. We all understand that. But like, you leave your doors unlocked. You leave the keys in the car. I don't really know what part of the world you can do that anymore and like lay your head down at night going... Yeah, my purse is in there and the keys are in it, but it'll be fine. Everyone's honest. Because there's no self-accountability anymore. No. It's crazy. I mean, I was interviewing somebody, I don't know, a month or so ago, and they worked at King's Dominion, and they were in charge of, like, the Halloween and all of that stuff. Okay. Yeah. And um, one of the questions I asked him, I, it came up, and he was like, you know, dealing with parents when they're mad about their kids getting scared. And I stopped and said, wait a second. They showed up at Halloween to a scare fest. Yeah. And then they're mad at you because their kids got scared. He's like, yeah, it happens every single day. They should tip. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> they the they did their job. Yeah. We went to yeah. a haunted hayride the other day. My kids weren't really scared. It's like, this is not scary. I feel like I got gypped. Yeah. I wanted to like clean crap out of their pants at the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> I want like, them that's... scarred for yeah. years. Yeah. I want to pay for therapy for this fucking out. <laughs> yeah. But no. Did they get the job? Uh, nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You don't want people scaring people at your work? But he wasn't one that was scaring. He just didn't have the best answers. Yeah, I mean. That one was just entertaining to me. When I was like, <laughs> wait yeah, a second. Wait, yeah. what, you're, you're telling me they got what they wanted and they were mad about it. And he's like, yeah, it happened every day. Well, that's going to happen here, too. You're gonna, people are going to get what they want. <laughs> yeah. so you're going to have to toughen up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's wild out there, man. Like, my wife, my I've had in-laws leave their doors unlocked over my house and like shit's gotten rifled through stuff's gotten stolen. I'm like, look, these aren't like, it's not gangs coming in the neighborhood. It's not, no, not you know, it's not crime stuff. syndicates. Like it's jerk off teenagers it's that fucking are bored. Andy. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And a rag and they go around bunch of and doors. they pop door handles. And Let's if a door they opens, find. they're going to see if there's yeah. some cash in there or, or an iPhone. And then they're going to bounce. And yeah. chances are, chances are, they could take your iPhone, prank call some pe some people, and spike it on the ground, and they're not even going to get it, do anything with it. Like, but you're going to be inconvenienced. Yeah. So, is it more inconveniencing to lock your damn doors and be accountable for your shit, or go get your replacement iPhone, call the police, so, you know, get new credit cards? Like, I know it's easier. I'm a lazy sack of shit, so I'm gonna fucking just lock my doors on the way out. Like, it's not hard. Isn't that the truth though? Like every kid that I've known who ever used to do like like car hopping or whatever you call it yeah it's literally just the cars that are unlocked it's right. a crime oh, yeah. of opportunity of yeah i mean yeah. 
And all, all I ever stole, or friends of mine, you know, it was like, it was like uh, <laughs> that I heard about in rumors. Uh, yeah. We're like CDs. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, they've got Pearl Jam. The new Pearl Jam yeah, CD. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, perfect score. Yeah, like. But oh, that's they, it. The car was unlocked. Sure. They've got an ashtray full of quarters. Like, yeah. that's four and a half dollars I just got. Like, okay. Yeah. No one's over there picking Pack locks. Pack smokes. Let's call Andy. Yes. <laughs> What's okay, wild is like I listen to these true crime podcasts and it's the same thing. Mm. They're like, What made you go into that house and murder that entire family? Other oh, doors unlocked. Yep. Like, yeah. Yeah. You jiggle the door. Yeah. Move on. <laughs> like I'm not I'm not trying to pick a lock, go through all this. Like that is just But when you're honest, you think everyone else is honest. I don't think anyone's honest, and I'm honest. I just but assume I'm saying the worst. A yeah. lot of people. I'm the same way. Like, yeah. I just assume everybody. Else a lot is of jack. people that are honest believe that other people are good, like they are. I mm. get it, but I guess the, it only takes a couple times of being yes. burnt before yes. you go. Maybe they're not. Yeah. So I just lock the door, unless no. I have a soft top, and then I actually leave. Never the, lock yeah. the door because I used to have. I, I remember one day I parked next to uh, next to my buddy in my Jeep, and we both had Jeeps. And I didn't lock my door. And he was like, why aren't you locking your door? And I was like, because if they want anything, they're just going to cut my fucking top or they're going to open yeah. my top and go in and get it. And that's worse. So I'd rather actually just make it simple. I was like, there's nothing in there of value because I recognize that I'm driving a Jeep. So yeah. it's always a crime of opportunity around it. Yep. Sure enough, we get back from the movie. We go outside of the parking lot. His top has been cut. Then they reached in unlocked the door yeah. got all the stuff they'd gone through my car too yeah. my door was unlocked yeah. my yeah. top was intact his they pissed him off because they locked it so they just cut it yeah my little suzuki samurai or no sidekick same thing that i had that had the soft top when i was in college i used to do the same thing leave it empty and leave it unlocked and i would still come out and dumbasses they cut the top Ugh. Like, they wouldn't even try the door. Oh, that's frustrating. I'm like, you that's idiots. It was open. And, like, once a week, I come out. The girl I was dating lived on Monument. I come out to Monument Avenue. Doors, passenger door would be wide open, and all the owner's manual and napkins and shit from the glove box would be on the front seat. And I just put it back in there and shut it and go about my day. Yeah. I just had this conversation last night with the, someone that grew up uh, or was living downtown Richmond in the early 90s. And we were talking about how much it changed in the 90s. Yeah. and what bars are still there and, and all that stuff. And she's like, oh, I live down there. And my car got broken into so many times that I would just leave. If it was a nice night, I'd just leave, roll my window down. Yeah. Like, just please Don't take break what you want. My you right. can't yeah. even break my glass. Right. Um, yeah. or, gotcha, it, bitch. Or absolutely leave it unlocked. And yeah. Just, yeah. just empty it out and be like, all right, do what you want. Don't have anything of value yeah. in there. Just leave What's it open. What's funny is I had that yep. same car and I lived in, on 23rd Street on the north side of Broad on, in Churchill, like, on the outskirts of like the not nice part of town. Get out. And that part of town <laughs> and that year I lived there, my shit didn't get fucked with at all. But whenever I was staying at my girlfriend's house or staying at a friend's house that lived in the West End or Mon or Monument or somewhere, my car always got fucked with. Whenever I was in the nicer part of town, my shit would get fucked with. And that's cause they fucking go to the nice parts of town and fuck with shit. Like that hey, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. If everyone around you is just as poor as you are, there's no value right. in going yep. in their shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to get the same monopoly pieces well, from you McDonald's that you already have. If you live in a bad part of town, <laughs> like you're not going to break into the cars on your block. Nope. <laughs> like you got to get a little bit distance there. Well, the trick is that you also break into your car. Yeah, there you go. Like you ruffle your shit around yeah. too. <laughs> like you can't, you can't just commit a Did crime. Did you get with hit your, too? Oh, oh shit, yeah. me too. You're like, I oh, know. Look at my car. <laughs> believe this shit. <laughs> Yeah, you got to make sure you get your own stuff. Leave a big trail around yours. Yeah. That's how you throw them off the scent. Yeah, I don't. I didn't see any... I don't know if I've ever seen, like, smashed pumpkins in our neighborhood. Like, that was a big thing when we were kids. I remember I got my pumpkin smashed once. I worked so hard carving this damn pumpkin. Someone smashed it all over the street, and it was all strewn about. And I just remember crying. I'm so upset. Was that last year? <laughs> I'm just saying it was it was later in life. It wasn't that late. But now I just look at it like if you leave the pumpkin intact, it's so much stronger. It can withstand more. Once you start weakening it, take yeah. out all the guts, cut the top, carve it out. It's just wanting to be kicked. Yeah. So I just I still not I don't carve pumpkins. And yeah. Kids are always like, why aren't you carving the pumpkin, Dad? I'm like, mm, target. Yeah. Target. 
I'm leave, leave mine as is. I hate carving pumpkins. My TV's just unsynced. Oh man, oh, mm. you did no. such a good job syncing them up earlier. Now too. I'm heartbroken. I can't. I can't pod. Oh no! How are you gonna fight through this? It's just a World Series. I'm just gonna. Everything's changed now. Okay. I'm gonna have to go do all this stuff. Just turn one off. Nope. <laughs> we have to have two TVs showing the exact same thing at all times. Yeah, that's how it works. Heartbreak. So we just got back from our first M4K uh, mustache uh, event. Yeah, I was about to bring up the elephant in the room and Troy's beautiful, clean, yeah, unshaven, skinny face. Baby, baby skinny face. face. Yo, your face too. looks yeah. so skinny. It looks weird. Like you've lost Feels a weird. bunch of weight and then you cut all the facial hair yeah. off. That's a lot. Look like, like a different person. Yep. I'd walk in your house with your hands up. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to accidentally get shot because no one knows who you are. You are definitely the biggest dramatic change whenever yep. this time of year comes around. Joe the chef looks pretty different when, sure. he, when he cleans his face up. But he does a lot of goofy stuff with his face. Yeah. So there's always something And different. it's goofy to start. Very true. When you so, sent me the sorry, picture Joe. this morning, I looked at it. It took me I was like a double take to look at like, wait, who is this? <laughs> well, when you have a beard 11 months of the year and you shave it. it well, is. we are all clean shaven right now. That's yeah. right. All of us. Today is shave day shave for day. M4K, which is the day that we all will shave. It's not a complicated Funny concept. How they came up with that name. Yep, yep, they did. So this is day Wait a round one. table to figure that out. This is day one of our 30-day journey to raising money for kids for M4KRichmond.org. Yep. So if you aren't familiar with it, go over to M4KRichmond.org and you can find anybody. Actually, everybody that's on the podcast tonight. Is Team ITPH. Is Team Inside the Pallet House This is podcast. like a quarter of the team right here, isn't it? Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah, the numbers are uh, well. It's it's not the the math is off, but it's it's not off enough. It's close. Are we at sixteen? I wish. I wish. Ah. <laughs> so no, no, we are not. Okay. Maybe a third. No, it is a third. Then yes. The math. The math. We is can off. still get a couple stragglers. Yeah. It's not well, too late. So it's, it's not, not too, late. too late, and that's actually why I was I was bringing it up, and I wanted to question your math because I'd like your math to be right. But we lost a lot of members from the we team did. this year. We did. It was it's kind of shocking when you told I was like, wait, we're down we're down like that. I think we're huh? down like seven. Yeah, that's it hurts. Well, that's like seven thousand dollars at a minimum for children. The, yeah. So that's that that's a bit of a dagger. Yeah. For the uh, the children's charities. Because every year we do this, we join M4K, we grow must- mustaches, and what we're doing is ultimately raising money for children's charities here in the Richmond area. Obviously, it kind of an awkward way to go about raising money for kids, but uh, it's serious business. We just don't take ourselves very seriously, which is exactly yep. the kind of charity that I like to get involved it with. It sounds ridiculous. And then you just tell people, well, last year we raised $850,000. But that's then, it. But that, yeah, that's all. <laughs> all we raised was 850000 But that's why I'm saying $850,000 for children's charities here in the Richmond area, that's serious business. I mean, that is... Yeah, for real. That's more than the GDP of some small yeah. countries. That is yeah. ju- just <laughs> Richmond. That's great. Yeah. Yes. And that's just here with the M4K growers. But our team alone dedicated a significant portion of yeah, that. Yeah, I can't remember. Was, I want to say 54000 That's a lot. I can't remember the exact. I mean, that's, that's it dope. It was no. over fifty. I've raised a family on less than that for a year. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about that. Yeah, we were. <laughs> so it, it can be done. So that's that's a big deal. So to actually lose some team members, a bit of a dagger because that puts a little more of the onus on those yeah. of us that are Glad growing. Terrence and Adam are here. Y'all are going to have to work extra hard <laughs> this year. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Adam's a rookie, so he's That's gonna, right. So he automatically gets a little. Uh, he gets a pass, but he gets a little help too. People yeah. are excited. You find new people that donate. This this is exciting. Terrence has a bar. Yeah, so he can just leave out a QR code and drunk, right. drunk people will be like. <laughs> What? That, Why did I send money to that? That is what a is good that? idea. Yeah. yeah, leave out the QR code and be like, if you would like us to continue to play all your favorite football matches here on the pitch, scan this code. Oh, shit. Well, you know, because all the games are on apps, this is a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I could have it like buffered, like you said, oh, it's out of sync. Oh, you know what? If you just donated a little bit to uh, <laughs> my mustache and to children's charities... Well, hold on. Probably get this synced doesn't, up for y'all. Put, only... put a different QR. They're all the same QR code, but make different sheets of paper and be like, 
Vote for your favorite team. Are you an Arsenal yep. fan? Are you a Liverpool fan? Scan this code and donate to let us know who you root for the most. Hold on. Could you act? Isn't, doesn't only one game get the volume, though, in the bar? No, well, for he, the most part, but it, it can, you know, if there's not a big, he's got different groups, areas. So I can, yeah, little group, like I do at patio, could definitely have a game. The dining room could have a upstairs game. The bar gonna, could have a game. Upstairs could have yeah. a game. I was so just I thinking, it up. You, you could say, though, like, oh, we'll, give yeah. you, like, we'll give you the volume if your team donates the most or money you can to get, M4K. Or you can get the bar area, which point. is like the dope spot. Like, Otherwise, we'll put you outside in the cold or, you know. <laughs> you could offer you can, up, based on donation, which area people get. So if there's a team, if there's a, a club, sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh gosh, oh, don't yeah. stop stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. You know, Ooh. on the pitch. You know, yeah. <laughs> Talk sports. <laughs> we are the number, number one sport. Right? <laughs> yes, this, I did. this is why. Yeah, it's exactly right. Say things like pitch. Yeah. Match. Match. But you could do that, right? You could say if you want to have the private area upstairs, whichever team by this time donates the most money, you get the private area. Last year, last year was awesome because it was uh, that goofy year where the World Cup was in the winter because yeah, it was yeah, in yeah. Qatar. And, uh, but it was a perfect time for me to walk around at halftime. I was like, Hey guys, you know, I'd, yeah. I'd walk around halftime with like, and just literally put the QR code up, put a jar up and just say, you know, this is what I'm doing. And like, at that point I had a, a mustache. You can yeah, tell. Yeah. I was you had a good mustache and, last year. And, uh, and yeah, I, I got like four or $500 at wow. halftime. Of one of the games. Nice. Um, See, I don't have that advantage. No. That now was, we have a podcast. Cool. Yeah. So we can put it out to them. So, so Troy and I don't have the ways and means we, we don't own bars. No. Well, bars that don't make money. <laughs> I've got one of those. This, yeah. is a do- this is a dope bar right here. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But it, this is definitely a not-for-profit. Speaking of, M4KRichmond.org, that's a not-for-profit. That's right. 5013C. So you can write it off, all that's your donations. Right. Even yep. if you don't want to help the kids, you can still stick it to the tax man. That's right. Tax deductible. Poor Brendan at his bar every week. You know, he hosts football, and we all come hang out and... People bring food, and you know, certain people are generous and certain people are not. But like, it always comes up. He's got his tip jar out. He never asks for anything, and like, he's just out here, and he's like, people ask, and he's like, yeah, you know, I spent a couple hundred dollars on the beer today, and I had to buy the cups, and you know, the cleaning supplies, and the this and the that, and then it's very profitable. And then it's like people still don't want to come off ten or twenty bucks. It's like they're like, thanks. <laughs> Yeah. Like I tip and Brendan's like, look, Troy's not even drinking and he's tipping. Like Yeah, I just call like, out the positive. If I you're don't... if you're here and enjoying the bar, like no matter what you're partaking in, like you're you should pay an entry fee. <laughs> like that's the least you can do. You ever deal with that, Terrence? I was, I just was telling Brendan like <laughs> earlier tonight. Yeah. You got freeloaders coming yeah. in your bar. Just it literally just happened like last week. Um our trivia night. Oh. Um yeah, we, I, yeah, we, so I like, yeah. The fact you said this is just is uh, it's, it's kismet. Yep, and uh, not only that's a little ironic, um, but yeah. So they came in and just like joined another group, and we're like, there wasn't really room for them, but they kind of squeezed in. And like you know, ten minutes go by, twenty minutes go by. They haven't ordered anything. They haven't done anything. To the service, like, hey, but they're playing trivia, right? They're playing trivia. Where I'm giving and trivia, you give away prizes away, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and I'm paying for the guy to be there. So it's entertainment, and uh, yeah, because so to break the fourth wall. Bars do trivia nights on slower nights to help drive traffic in to help drive your profit. Sure, yeah. But then also you're you're paying for that. Yeah, but person you spend, to be there. you have to spend money to get the yeah, money back. You're paying for the gift cards that people yeah. win. You know, there's there's money that comes out well, on all ends of this. If you professional trivia night, like Terrence said, you're paying for the trivia guy to come in and host yeah. it. Run of course. it, do you know? Make it look good, and it's and, not and just Terrence over in the corner. No, those like, dudes aren't cheap because they're actually hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, find yeah. a good one, like they're good. And exactly what you were talking about, like my wife had, she literally wrote up something that just said, "Look, you know, we're assuming you, or you're, you're uh, entering like a social contract where, you know, you're if you're here sitting down enjoying this night, then you have agreed to support our business in some way. Yeah, and, and buy a fish we and assume chips, you're going to have like yeah, some have fries a beer, or a coke, yeah, even a coke, if you don't something, drink. Something. And so, the, and so eventually, even the even the guy on the MC was like, "Hey, you know, would like put his mic down and be like, hey, you guys going to order anything? You know, yeah, yeah, get something in, or at least tip your server if you're yeah. not, if you're going to sit here.'" And they all kind of left halfway through because they couldn't be bothered. 
drop like one star reviews on Which, Yelp way, and Google and all this stuff about how they a, felt pressured. That's a your bar, like, and all this your stuff. Your bar has always been on the cutting edge of NA beers. Like yeah. y'all have always had great NA beers. I get most of my NA beer knowledge from you and your bar. Like yeah. you, you always have good beer, NA beer there. Yeah, we got at least four. Yeah, so um, there's there's always an option. Like yeah. it's not. I've been fucked up enough where I've staggered in there and ordered an NA beer <laughs> just so I could sit at the bar because, like you said, there is a social contract. Like, I am here because yep. I need to just, like, cool off for a minute. Yeah. But I'll, I'm going to buy something yeah. so I can just sit on this bar stool and have a conversation and just get my shit together before I head back out. And I've done that. It's fine. Yeah. And that's, that's, my, my dad hasn't drank in, like, 40 years. Yeah. So, you know, he always had an NA there. And uh, you know, that's just something that we've always so they, made sure so we, they, we had o- that option for people. So, or and I think my dad was always funny when people did get hammered. He's like, "Give me another beer." He's like, "All right," and just grab the NA one, pour it to him, and hand it to him, and just keeps that guy going on NAs for <laughs> until he's go. like, "All right, now it's time to go, boss." And he's like, "Oh, all right, thanks, Terry," and walk out. <laughs> so they fucking rail uh, raked you over the fucking yeah. coals on uh, some social media bullshit. Yep. So now you're just dealing with that fun nonsense. And I was I was telling Brendan, all of our one star reviews over the last you know, couple of years are all people that have actually never s- even set foot in Penny Lane, let alone spend money. That's insane because that they get turned away at the door because they're drunk yeah, or yeah, yeah, they're yeah. coming in with like forty people at midnight. I'm like, we don't have room. They're like, fuck you. Yeah, uh, yeah you know. Yeah. And it's like, and then they're like, you know, this doorman was a jerk off. I think yeah. one guy called our door guy a douche canoe. That was fun. Nice. So for like a local business like you, how does that affect you, those ratings? Um, I mean, it's hard to say, but, you know, I think if you're coming in to be like, hey, who has good fish and chips and a good vibe and can I watch a a match or, or, you know, have a good pint? Like, and you look and you see the only one star reviews are because people got turned away at the door or uh, whatnot. You hope that people. Yeah, I think think you see that. that Like, all right, that's not an impact of like, oh, the beer was flat or like no one's complaining about the product. They're just complaining about the fact that. They couldn't even get in. But you just need enough of those. You need, you yes. need enough oh, no, of those no four fun. and five star reviews to kind of negate yes. some of those yes. bad ones. And, and we get a bunch of good overall ones. Overall rating. And, it's, and the, the, the worst part is you harp on the bad ones, of right? Yeah. You get like yep. 12 great ones. You get this one awful one, and, and that's, that's the one, one you go to yep. bed thinking well, about. Well, I mean, you, you guys annoying. open any given night and serve hundreds of people, and they all have good experiences, but they don't all put go to, go to Yelp or social yep. media and go, I love this bar. It's one of my favorites. So and so takes care of me every time I'm there. Like, where people are more quick to do the bad review than they are the good review, right? Like, it's just kind of human nature. Like, we need Yelp for people. Yeah, you know that's probably a thing. Like, I would love to see my review. I'd like to think that it's pretty good. I'm sure I've had. You some... wouldn't be able to sleep is, at night. Isn't no. there a Black Mirror like that Black Mirror episode where? Like everyone gets rated. Like every yeah, interaction they you have, you, you yeah. they, they kind of star in you right there, and then that would be wild. You, Brendan, you love. You want everyone to. Oh, like it would you. keep me up. At, oh, yeah. it would yeah. kill me. It would kill me. You my, would kill yourself. My one star. You get like three one stars. You'd imagine be like, That's how many it. positive reviews I'd get if I killed myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'll how the last it. thought would be like. This Those is, three people that one star me will be so happy. Yeah, if I got below four, I'd off myself in a <laughs> yeah. dramatic fashion, and then like hope that you got back to five. Get me, just get me over four again, <laughs> yeah. so I can go out in peace. Fuck yeah. sake, you know, I don't want to fuck out. I can't die as a three and a half. You know what's sad though? That like that's people think that way. Like people, I think just that did. Way. Yes. My first thought was, <laughs> like, yeah. I off myself. It's a whole point. No, people do that. People have done that. I'm sure. Because look how everyone loves Matthew Perry right now. Yeah, everyone loves him. Like anytime somebody dies like that, all of a sudden they're yeah. the best. Forget everything else that they didn't like about him in the past ten. Years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you just you forgive so quickly. Yeah. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, they're dead. Oh, I should have said all these nice things that <laughs> or, I have to say, and then they say them. Or the fact that like no one has no one mentions him for 10 years since yep. the show's gone off the air and it's like diatribes on social oh, media he like he best. was the best he meant so much to me no one bought more fucking vicodin from me <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked up <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> <laughs> what's his dealer saying <laughs> Dealer's like, well, well, returning the Lexus. Guess I'm getting a new job. <laughs> Fuck. Back I'm to work. A, sit in a cubicle. Yeah, back to Starbucks. 
Womp womp. Yep. Pedal uppers to normal people. Yeah, exactly. To normies. <laughs> Pumpkin spice uppers. Yeah. The well, best. It is the season. Mmm. It is. It is. Oh, shit. We've far overrun our... Oh, uh, shit. Deli time. Our deli time. You will find a six-pack down there, and you will find two beers that you can choose from, Troy. One of them is the Julie, and then one of them is a Christmas beer. Oh, because now that Halloween's over, we're skipping right to the big dog. That's right. Is it midnight? They do their Christmas, right? Okay, we're doing the Julie. You want to do the Christmas? No, we don't have to. I was just saying officially. Yep. The the, rep, the reps just started coming around selling Christmas beer, and it's like it's not it's still October. Yeah. And, at least it was then. No, nope. the minute November hits, it is holiday season. We get two solid months of this now. This is America. And this is how we do it. And I hate it because <laughs> I love Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving does not get the respect it deserves. There's no money to be made in Thanksgiving, except for in turkeys. Yes. The, 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 the no, massive that's right. genocide.